Welcome. Welcome to all the colleagues that they are uh, uh, join us. Um, first of all, we were a bit sorry about the fact that the, the, <clears throat> the conference has been postponed, uh, but it was for a very serious family reasons, so Antonio, and I'm really grateful that despite that, Antonio is with us today. So thank you very much, Antonio, for that. Uh, I, I want first to confirm that all the questions that we have received, uh, many, many questions, are going to be dealt with. We are going to keep the form open in order to keep on getting questions from parents, uh, teachers, uh, whoever is interested in European schools, because we want to ensure that everyone get the answer to the question. Then you cannot be satisfied about the answer, but what is totally unacceptable is to see so many questions raised and mentioning we have been asking that without getting any answer. That is not the proper way to deal. And we ensure that we will do our best in order to ask each and every uh, service who is in charge to, to answer to the question. We are really honored today to have the chairman of the Board of Governors, uh, Antonio Cennini. Um, this seems to be Antonio's quite disruptive uh, approach because everyone was complaining that it's the first time that we have the honor to have the <laughs> chairman of the Board of Governors with us. We know that some have been jealous about that, and uh, we are really glad that tomorrow you will also meet with the local staff committee because it's important to have a social dialogue even uh, with the chairman of the board of governance that is part of the system. This meeting is uh, aiming actually twofold. First, uh, to, to get from Antonio the results of the meeting in Parma, that seems to be a quite historical meeting for a very successful one. Uh, and I was glad also to see that our Minister for Foreign Affairs was present at the meeting that shows how important are European schools, also at political level. Uh, and whenever we discuss about the future of the schools, I know that parents and even sometimes students are uh, afraid that looking for the future will, in a way, disregard the present. And it's not. Um, we know that when we organize what it was called uh, the, the Etats Généraux des Écoles Européennes, uh, we have been putting forward what we see now, and we are really glad to see that on the resolution of the Parliament, but also on the conclusion on Parma about the future of the European school to open the European schools, or even though there, hmm. where there is no institution, uh, then has been uh, criticized as you are going to undermine the quality of the European schools. You are going not to deal properly with the problem with the existing schools, especially group one. Uh, but we are convinced that the two options are totally feasible together. And it doesn't mean to have a future for European school in a way to, to undermine the quality of the present schools. Um, just for the, for the agenda of the meeting, uh, Antonio, we will present the results of the meeting in Parma and the resolution and uh, what is now called the declaration in Parma. Then my two colleagues that they are dealing with this file, the European schools for our trade unions, Alexander Kedra and Marco Pino, that they are there uh, in the picture with the, our flag. Uh, we will uh, try to summarize the question that has been addressed, not all the question, but those that we could reasonably deal with today with Antonio, uh, but the rest of the question are going to be dealt properly. There is really a promise that we do, and we will keep you informed about the outcome of the answer that we could eventually get. So now, Antonio, thank you again for being with us, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Cristiano, and thank, uh, thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues, for inviting me to this, uh, to this meeting. Uh, uh, as Cristiano anticipated, uh, um, apparently it is the first time that uh, uh, the chair of the board of governors uh, attends such a meeting. And uh, let me say, I'm quite surprised about this because, uh, uh, I mean, uh, what I experienced during the, my presidency, uh, which started, as you know, in August and uh, which will end uh, end of July. Um, I mean, the, the, the normal uh, thing for me and for all the team of the Italian presidency uh, was uh, to uh, talk as much as possible to all the stakeholders uh, to understand better what's going on. Because, uh, as you uh, very well know, the, the European school system is a, a very, very sui generis system. 
uh, um, from my point of view, I see the intergovernmental uh, side of it. So the board of governors with uh, one delegate per member state plus uh, uh, one delegate for the commission plus one delegate for the main agencies and stakeholders. Uh, but uh, there is also uh, uh, another, uh, let's say, um, level. Uh, so it's a real life level, uh, the level of uh, of pupils and, and teachers. Uh, sorry, pupils and and, uh, and parents. Uh, I've been uh, I'm, I'm a parent of three kids uh, who went through the system of the European school. So I've been uh, uh, from from the other side of of, uh, of the barricades for a long time. Uh, so to go back to my first point, uh, uh, um, I think that the uh, regular uh, exchange with uh, with the main stakeholders of the system is uh, is the basic of this of this job. Having said that, uh, um, so and and also uh, this is why I, I received the other invitations. I I will be glad uh, to 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 participate to other meetings uh, tomorrow. The committee of the personnel. Uh, I also received another invitation for for May. Uh, but so um, until uh, uh, I'm. Uh, in charge, uh, please uh, uh, abuse me. <laughs> I, I will. I will try to uh, to do my best to transmit also informally uh, what I've been uh, uh, gathering as an information as, as a as a state of the art of the process of reforming the European schools. Um, this uh, event uh, uh, comes uh, by chance uh, after the 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 meeting the extraordinary meeting of the board of governors in parma held in parma uh, from the 8th uh, of april until uh, the 12th of april it was extraordinary that not not because the the, the meeting was extraordinary but because uh, uh, we managed to attach to this meeting uh, a, a special event uh, the teachers forum um, which uh, was the first uh, uh, example of, of such a forum ever in in the European school system, um, and it was given to the fact that uh, the Italian presidency um, decided to to set two priorities uh, uh, during this uh, year of presidency. One priority uh, was more general, more forward looking. Uh, so how to uh, um, uh, how to act, uh, how to, uh, let's say, um, uh, follow up uh, from, from the European Parliament's uh, uh, report on the future of European schools and uh, how to uh, um, translate it into concrete actions. So it, it was a more general uh, discussion uh, held during these months uh, with the, all the stakeholders inside the European school system and outside, but also as the Italian presidency, we wanted to uh, have uh, also some short term uh, uh, priority uh, and we decided to focus on teachers uh, because uh, in our view, um, as also you confirmed with all the questions you have raised about the locally recruited teachers, we think that uh, um, at this stage of development of the system, uh, um, teachers are uh, are at the, at the cross point with the, between the, the, the let's say the old system of European schools and the uh, new or future system we we are working to to implement. Uh, and so we had uh, two days uh, uh, dedicated to teachers. Uh, we involved the 200 teachers from. Uh, uh, all the European schools, uh, but not only. Uh, we also wanted to create uh, a new experience to put together uh, um, teachers coming from from the European school level and teachers coming from the national school level to uh, spend two days uh, working uh, on uh, many of the issues you have been raising in, in your questions. So, uh, um, career frameworks, uh, permanent skilling, uh, uh, recruitment, salaries, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm glad to say that uh, at least uh, we have started to uh, address uh, uh, many of the issues you you, you have raised uh, during this teachers forum, and uh, also uh, this teachers forum will uh, uh, 
uh, become a permanent event of the European school. So every year, uh, each presidency will uh, continue having this uh, yearly meeting of uh, uh, European teachers to, to, to go ahead with the, uh, with the, 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 the most urgent reforms and uh, hopefully also with the uh, new, new approaches uh, coming from, from these reforms. Um, so, I'm sorry for the very long uh, introduction, but uh, to, it was uh, needed to give you an idea. Uh, so, what what did we decide in Parma after the teachers' forum? We had three three days, uh, three days, um, board of governors. The agenda of the board of governors is was very rich. We had like uh, forty points, so uh, we had to adopt a lot of documents. So you, um, this is uh, something public. Also, uh, Cristiano will share with you. Uh, the decisions uh, uh, which have been taken uh, adopted during this, this board of governors. But uh, I would focus now uh, for this meeting on uh, uh, two uh, of these documents adopted, which are uh, the let's say the follow up, uh, direct follow up of uh, the um, report of the European Parliament, the action plan. Uh, called the reflection on the future of the European school system, follow up uh, to the report of the European Parliament, uh, which includes, uh, uh, let's say, uh, the state of the art of uh, um, what the Board of Governors uh, has decided to do to implement in the short, uh, mid term, and long term following the uh, European Parliament's report. So, I think it would be useful later on when we will get into the uh, the detail of your questions also to make a reference uh, to this document uh, so that uh, you you will be able to as soon as you receive the the the, doc, the document adopted by the board of governors to go into the document and see exactly um, at what point we are with with many of, of the issues you have raised uh, the second document uh, uh, I consider a very important, uh, um, uh, which has been adopted in Parma, is uh, the so-called Parma Declaration to Action Plan on the reflection on the future of the European school system. Um, this is something that, uh, as a, a president of, of, of the system for this year, uh, we I wanted to uh, I proposed to the board of governors to adopt uh, because uh, mm, we think that it is very important to keep the momentum created by the European Parliament and uh, uh, keep the ambitions of the reform very high. And uh, um, the action plan, as, as you will be uh, able to to see yourself, uh, uh, it's more a working document. Um, fixing some uh, concrete uh, uh, follow-up, uh, concrete actions, um, giving the global framework of, of what's already uh, ongoing and, and what uh, uh, will need to be implemented. While, uh, mm, uh, uh, but we didn't, as an Italian presidency, uh, we didn't want uh, to send a message that uh, everything has been closed and sold with the adoption of the action plan. So, with the Parma Declaration, which is a, a, a two pages document with uh, some, uh, um, uh, let's say, more uh, long term uh, perspective points, uh, we want to, to make sure that uh, we are just at the beginning of the process, that uh, the European school system is uh, our treasury, and uh, we want to. Uh, uh, use it to create to create something even more more important and more valuable for the next for the coming years. But we need to uh, push put all, all our political in, uh, engagement to uh, to keep the the issue in, in the agendas of, of the Commission of the governments uh, and of all the stakeholders. So this package uh, action plan and uh, Parma declaration in my view, is a, is a good achievement because uh, both documents were adopted uh, unanimously. And uh, so from tomorrow on, uh, we will keep working on uh, um, based on, on, on the conclusions of these documents. I don't know if uh, on, I've been clear if you have questions uh, on, uh, on the procedure, on the general, uh, let's say, perspective of, of, of this action. Uh, otherwise, we can, uh, if you want, we can uh, go ahead and and go to the 
to the questions of uh, of your members. And first of all, Antonio, we are glad that we are opened the door to having the the the, the chairman of the board of government with us, and, and eventually even in the future with the actors. Uh, what I will would like to propose you before the end of your mandate, uh, eventually to organize another meeting. Uh, that this time we will be also based on the true knowledge of the document that you are referring to that are not known so far by our colleagues so we will share with them after the meeting uh, and perhaps to have a, a, another meeting with you before the end of your mandate will be really useful for uh, keeping on discussing the different items that are now at stake uh, what i propose is now to to give the floor to, to mark and alexander the they have been in charge of dealing with so many questions that we got, uh, really many, many. Uh, that is the proof that was needed. Um, and again, I want to confirm that the form will be kept open. And then uh, you could keep on raising questions to us, even as a follow up of this meeting, uh, and then we will deal with that. Alexander and uh, Marco. Yes, uh, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Mr. Cenini for his uh, availability to, to answer the questions. And I also wanted to thank all the colleagues who submitted the questions. We received uh, more than 150 of them. So it's, it's obvious that we cannot uh, po 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 post them now, all of them. Uh, so we tried to uh, maximize and make this meeting the most uh, effective. Uh, we pulled some questions and we uh, bypass the questions that we think are maybe better addressed on a different forum, like the tomorrow uh, meeting with the local staff uh, committee. So my apologies to, to everyone who, who expected that their question will appear today. Uh, we think the most of the questions we managed to pull and they, we will hear the answers to them. But some of them, especially those related to the site specific or country specific, uh, we will not pose them today. So we will try to address them later in the future, as Cristiano mentioned. Uh, we prepared the five major chapters, I would say, and we will try to uh, keep this. Uh, if you pose a questions on the chat, uh, I will be monitoring it and we will uh, include some of them at the end of our five chapters. And so uh, we start now with chapter one. <laughs> Please, Marco. Thank you, Alex. So, so the, the first question is on enrollment and languages, SWALS principle and guidelines for the future. So enrollment policy aim is to balance fairness, eligibility and available resources, ensuring a smooth enrollment process for the students. This seems from parents' view far to be achieved. We observe in recent years that many parents in the European school in English or French section are trying to have their children admitted to local public school. Some linguistic section in some school are slowly dying. There are few pupils and classes are joined with lower teaching quality and then a spiral of always less subscription. Could you inform us on the present and future of the English language section in the context of Brexit and the SWALS system in the European schools? Parents from most countries seem to prefer instruction from their children in English, French and German. How do you see this phenomenon? Is the Board of government, Governors aware of the possible reason behind this trend and ready to set new principles and guidelines? Thank you. Uh, thanks very much uh, for this for first question. As I anticipated, uh, mm, uh, I will uh, uh, mm, make reference uh, uh, to the points uh, uh, in the, 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 the chapters in the action plan uh, uh, addressing these points so that you will be able also to see more into the detail uh, what uh, the, the Board of Governors has decided. So, these uh, issues uh, concerning uh, uh, enrollment uh, and SWORS, most of all, uh, are included uh, uh, in the um, uh, 
uh, European Parliament's recommendation number 21 and number 29. Um, uh, and uh, uh, have been, uh, uh, let's say, translated into concrete actions uh, in the action plan uh, in point 1.6, 1.8, and 2.7. I, I, I'm, it's only number for you now because you don't have the, the document uh, uh, in front of you, but uh, maybe if you uh, want to keep reference to this, it will be make it will make it uh, easier for you to consult uh, the the action plan. So, um, I will start from, uh, uh, let's say, the, uh, the, the, the second part of, of the first questions concerning uh, the, um, uh, the future of uh, the English language action uh, in the context of Brexit, etc. Uh, so, as far as uh, um, I understood from the discussions and from the decision taken by the board, uh, there, there is no harm for English actions, uh, no changes are foreseen. Um, also concerning the, the teachers, it is confirmed that uh, for um, language one, uh, and, philo and philosophy, for example, um, it will be always uh, native teachers, so uh, coming from, from Ireland, uh, while uh, for other languages, uh, for English as a language two and three, uh, they could be not non-native, but uh, uh, the quality control will be very high because the the level should be at least uh, C2 uh, for these for the parents. Concerning the fact uh, um, uh, of uh, some um, parents to uh, uh, to try to have their children admit in local schools, uh, so um, um, so we should uh, split the. Um, the discussion into two points. So um, uh, we are talking mainly about uh, Brussels, I suppose. As you know, uh, when we talk about enrollment policy, uh, we have a very special situation uh, for Brussels schools due to the overcrowding of schools, um, which uh, led to the adoption of uh, uh, enrollment policy uh, two years ago. And uh, um, I would suggest to give a look to the figures because, unfortunately, uh, the perspective of uh, overcrowding is uh, still uh, uh, very critical. Uh, you might be aware, and this was announced uh, in the Board of Governors, that uh, very recently the Belgian government uh, announced that they will not be able to respect uh, uh, the um, uh, delivery of the fifth school uh, until, uh, if I, I, I'm not wrong, 2032 or 2024, so which makes uh, uh, now very urgent to uh, rethink about uh, the strategy adopted to uh, to reduce the overcrowding in, in, into the schools. So, um, I I must say that uh, uh, I have uh, mainly an Italian perspective on this because uh, uh, this reform of, of the enrollment uh, uh, created a um, uh, quite sensitive situation for the Italian sections because uh, uh, now uh, normally uh, the Italian section are facing uh, the, the issue of uh, uh, vertical uh, merge of classes uh, uh, with uh, all the consequences coming for, for the point of teachers, uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So, um, uh, what I can say about this uh, uh, is that uh, uh, next year, uh, uh, a midterm review of the of the enrollment policy is uh, is foreseen for Brussels, uh, and uh, in, during the board of governors, it was uh, decided to uh, accelerate the discussion uh, due to the. Uh, this announcement for, from the Belgian authorities. So now we will have to to see what to do uh, without uh, the, the the fifth school. Uh, I think that all the forecasts will have to be re revised and 
uh, I think that there is a, this would be also an opportunity to uh, to go and see what are the details problems of each section of each linguistic section. Um, as far as the second part of the question, um, parents from most countries seem to prefer instruction uh, for the children in English, French, or Germany. Uh, German. Um, I mean, uh, uh, European schools are not uh, in international schools, so we we must have it very clear. If you want to keep uh, uh, the nature of of, of the system, uh, uh, we must give. Uh, uh, much attention to the fact that uh, uh, native, la native languages are still uh, uh, the, the basic uh, of the multi multilingual of the multilinguistic system of the European school. So, uh, in in some cases, I would say, but this is a personal opinion, that some parents uh, uh, prefer to. Uh, uh, to enroll the, the kids uh, the, uh, in uh, in other linguistic section because uh, they they are worried about the future of these linguistic sections because uh, uh, in some cases classes are becoming very small uh, so there is not a clear um, uh, a, a clear uh, uh, idea of what it could be the following year. So, uh, of course, if you go to the French section or the English section, you're sure that uh, uh, you, your class will be there <laughs> the, the following year. I mean, I'm in contact with many Italian parents, for example, uh, from uh, Ucle or, or Volouve, uh, who really um, don't know yet if next year there, there will be a, a class for for the kids because of the siblings rule because of the uh, changes in in the role in the enrollment policy so uh, this could be uh, the the reason why they prefer to uh, to enroll them in another section but uh, uh, i think that we we should do our best uh, to defend the uh, the, the 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 native languages uh, so also the, uh, the the section of the native languages because uh, uh, also to learn a second and third language uh, for for uh, for a child uh, it is easier if they have a very good uh, basic in their native language um, this is uh, the the orientation that the border governors has to 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 keep and defend also the all native languages in the European schools. I don't know if I managed to to answer to your question or if there are, there's any other uh, question on this. If you want, I could go into the detail of what's been uh, decided in the action plan. Yeah. Um, but let me. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. Um, first, for all colleagues that are putting questions in the chat, uh, chat will be recorded, and whenever we are not able to deal with the question, you will get the proper answers. <clears throat> yeah, if you can go, because I see many questions that I'd like to have details on what before going through the all the question. That has been raised, Antonio. Perhaps if you can just elaborate a bit on the action plan, the declaration on Parma, for colleagues that have raised the the question. Thank you. So you mean uh, uh, what's the difference between the two documents? I I I, um, I don't I don't know if I understood uh, exactly what what the question is. Yeah, I think that there are a few colleagues that are raised on the chat the question they would like to know better what has been decided in Parma with the declaration in Parma before going through the other question that uh, Alexander and Marco are going to, ad to, to address you. Okay, so um, we can say that uh, the, the action plan uh, is the document uh, um, outlining the follow-up actions stemming from the report uh, of the European Parliament. So, following the report of the European Parliament, uh, all the groups in the in the European school system, so all the working groups, so the enlarged preceding working group, the pedagogical group, the inspectors, the teachers, the directors, etc., uh, have been through these documents. 
say in checking one by one the actions proposed by by the parliament and uh, the action plan contains let's say the uh, concrete follow up uh, uh, of what being proposed by the parliament in some cases uh, uh, so, and the document divides the action into into different level, uh, already ongoing, uh, short term actions, mid term actions, and long term actions. For example, um, in the in the European Parliament's report, uh, uh, some uh, let's say long term actions are, are are mentioned, like the reform of the convention. So uh, the reform of the convention is not considered uh, something uh, by the board of governors, something to be done immediately, also because it's something political, very complicated. And uh, so there is no in the action plan a concrete action on this point, uh, such as uh, an external evaluation of, uh, of the European school system. It is something that uh, it cannot be done immediately because of uh, uh, it takes uh, longer to understand who can do it, uh, who pays for it, this, this etc. So, in the action plan, we you will not find a, a short term action on this. Uh, on the other side, on uh, um, some other issues, such as, uh, for example, the enrollment policy, in the action plan, uh, you, you find already um, some concrete uh, decisions taken by the, 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 the board of governors. And uh, I, I can give you an example. Um, for on enrollment, uh, the, um, the European Parliament, uh, I will take the recommendation, says calls for an urgent annual review of the enrollment policy and the school's fees in order to guarantee a place for all category one students for the socioeconomic mix to be broadened by opening the European school system to more categories of students and for the full potential of the accredited European schools to be uh, um, harnessed, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, this is the action proposed by, by the parliament. And uh, uh, on this, uh, following this action, uh, um, the, the board of governors uh, decided to do something. So, for example, um, on accredited European schools, uh, the, 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 the working group on the accredited European schools will have to present proposals uh, uh, by uh, on the aspect of quality assurance uh, and also this aspect uh, on this aspect um, there will be a Concrete, uh, the, the Board of Governors uh, uh, will mandate uh, the, com the competent working groups uh, to, to make a, a concrete proposal by April 2025. So, I, I, I'm not going through all this because it would take two hours only to read uh, all, the, all the actions. But uh, uh, to, to reply to the general uh, question, uh, in the action plan, you uh, already find uh, some decision, concrete uh, uh, executive decision taken by the, go by the governors. Um, I must say that uh, uh, on some of these actions, uh, uh, for example, parents uh, uh, already um, declare that uh, uh, what the board of governors decided to do is not uh, is not enough, uh, and that they they want to do to do more. But uh, um, in in many in many of these uh, of these uh, areas. Uh, uh, you can find also already something very concrete to, to be implemented. What about the Parma Declaration? Uh, the Parma Declaration, as anticipated, uh, touches upon the long-term view of the, of the reform. So, um, uh, recently I attended in the European Parliament um, a hearing in, in front of the um, committee, the Cult Committee, and uh, um, as you know, the rapporteur, Ms. Sicurell, of the of the report uh, is very ambitious. The report of the parliament is very ambitious. So uh, the parliament uh, uh, thinks that uh, what's included so far in the action plan is not enough. We must keep the ambition of reforming the system also 
to make structural reforms of the system uh, in the in the near future. So what uh, we wanted to do with the action plan, uh, with the Parma declaration, sorry, was to say that uh, the action plan is the first uh, is the first step, concrete step of what we can do now immediately uh, following up the action plan. But uh, uh, we recognize that uh, the political ambition of reforming the system must 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 be high. And uh, in the in the in the Parma declaration, um, we we agreed on the fact that uh, uh, the the most ambitious goals of the of the reform must be kept. Uh, and uh, we want to keep uh, all the um, political stakeholders, also the, the Council of Ministers of the European Union, the European Parliament, uh, on board to keep working together to implement the reform. So this is this is the, mm, the reason of the two documents. Perfect. Thank you very much, Antonio. Now we can come back to, to the question raised by the colleagues on our forum. Uh, so the floor is for Alexander and Marco. Thank you, thank you, Chris Cristiano. I have a, a, a follow-up of the first question. Uh, um, how is the Board of Governors addressing problem of fully inclusive education, both in budgetary and organizational support, linked to the need of students with physical handicaps and students with special needs? Yes, thanks very much. I I know that uh, uh, these uh, these issues are very sensitive. One also thanks to Cristiano who shared with me the the document uh, you you prepared in 2019 uh, to the to Commissioner Oettinger uh, um, on the on this point. Um, also on this, uh, I, I I want to give you the reference uh, uh, to the action plan. Uh, so the European Parliament uh, dealt with this issue in uh, proposed in, uh, in the recommendation number 26, uh, and uh, uh, in the action plan, uh, uh, it is translated in uh, action 1.5, stating uh, I will read this action because it's very important for you and for everybody. Uh, implement a coherent and systematic inclusion policy across the European school system that results in quality inclusive education, personalized learning, a, a flexible curriculum, increases the amount of educational and psychological support, provides an end uh, uh, of studies diploma, avoids exclusion due to disabilities. Um, what the Board of Governors decided on this uh, uh, was to give a continuous follow-up uh, of measures in, implemented so far. Uh, and on this point, uh, uh, in particular, um, I, I, I would like to give you some figures. Um, in 2015, 3.5% uh, of the entire budget uh, uh, was uh, uh, dedicated to the, the educational support. Uh, in uh, 2023, it was already almost a double 6.5. Uh, um, uh, so this is already a, a good uh, signal uh, uh, to 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 highlight the importance of of, of these uh, of these initiatives of this uh, issue in the in the policy of the European schools. Uh, in Parma, we have discussed uh, um, also. The issue of class sizes and uh, uh, the issue of alternative certificate uh, uh, for those who don't uh, achieve uh, uh, the back. Um, and uh, it's been decided that in the coming two years, uh, there will be an external evaluation uh, uh, made by the European Agency for Special Needs uh, to. Uh, uh, to, to see into the detail what are still the uh, the weaknesses and the strong points uh, uh, of, of the system. Um, also, uh, already the Board of Governors in, in December 2022 uh, decided that the Junior Laureate Certificate uh, uh, will be introduced uh, and um, 
uh, I must say as a weak point, uh, uh, the teacher to students ratio is one of the remaining uh, uh, most difficult open items uh, uh, of the action plan, which will be dealt with uh, uh, in the future. Okay, uh, I mean, for the for all the colleagues, I mean, you you are kindly invited to put your question in the chat in order to be able for us to deal with that. Um, now I will go back to to Marco and Alexander for uh, for the second round of question. Thank you. Um, so I'll 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 go to the second question, who is relating to back curricula and access to university. How is the Board of Governors ensuring that the European Baccalaureate continues to be recognized fully in all member states on an equivalent level? Whilst the Baccalaureate as such may still be accepted, some member states have installed a conversion method which make it difficult for European Baccalaureate holders to gain access to the university on the basis of the converted marks. What action and with which timetable time table will the Board of Government take to ensure equal transposition of learning results to guarantee non-discriminatory university admission to protect the right of European school pupils as laid down in the Convention defining the statute of the European school in all member states of the Convention? Parents are feeling the urgency in adapting curriculum to world changes. This involves purposely uh, design and addressing global challenge, nurturing 21 to 21st century compet competencies. What will be the concrete board of governor action in this domain? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. So, it's, I mean, you you took all the questions in the block. I will uh, try to go oh, one by one. And uh, but I, I sorry, I normally don't do it. But I I need to uh, reply to the first question with a question because uh, uh, the first question is how is the bug ensuring that the European Baccalaureate continues to be recognized fully in all member states? Uh, as far as I know. As far as I understand, also uh, as far as I understood from the discussion we had in the Board of Governors, uh, the European Baccalaureate is uh, is fully recognized in all member states, uh, and uh, the legal base for this recognition is in the Convention, and uh, nobody uh, has even proposed uh, or to 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 change the the legal the legal basis of this. So. I, I I I really think that no there's no danger to for the European Baccalaureate uh, to be recognized uh, all over Europe. And my question is why this question? Do you have any any uh, feedback or any? Uh, no, Antonio. Yes. Antonio, I'm interrupting you. I mean, it was an introduction to the second paragraph. Of course, the fear is that we see that uh, the conversion method is different by member state. This is quite normal, but you have the feeling that it becomes more difficult to access to some university in some member state because uh, uh, as the second paragraph of my long series of question, the conversion is putting is put at doubt by the parents. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Marco, for for the verification. So, um, so going to to the second paragraph of your question, uh, you're right. So uh, on this, uh, um, uh, I can say that. Uh, uh, Yes, it's true that uh, um, during the last year, some member states, uh, uh, in particular um, Denmark and, and Germany, uh, revised the conversion of marks and they created some, uh, uh, some worries uh, uh, regarding the fair treatment of, of, the, of the BAC uh, uh, all over Europe. But as far as I understand, uh, 
these problems have been solved in Denmark and uh, uh, they are still pending in Germany, but uh, um, uh, the, the, the Secretary General, the Office of the Secretary General uh, is uh, really committed to, to ensure equal transposition of learning results uh, to guarantee non-discriminatory non uh, university admission. So I, I, I think that also the European Commission uh, is also committed to ensure that member states meet their obligations for equal treatment. So I think that this point uh, should not be uh, among the most worries, <laughs> most the urgent worries of, of, of parents. There are some issues concerning the conversion method, but uh, uh, both the officers, the Secretary General and the Commission are well aware of it. And uh, I think the impact will not be uh, problematic for the for the entire system. Uh, going uh, uh, down to the third part of your questions. Um, Okay, so uh, what action on with the, which timetable with the board, uh, board of governors take? Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, uh, so uh, once again, uh, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, and also having discussed the, the, the issue with the Secretary General, uh, I don't see problems in university admissions so far. Uh, and uh, when uh, in, in, the, in the rare cases where it happened, uh, inspectors uh, are ready to intervene immediately. Uh, sometimes uh, the, it, it happens very frequently that uh, the universities uh, uh, contact the, the office of, of the Secretary General when they have doubts uh, about the recognition of, 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 of the title, the European title. So, um, also on this point, uh, I wouldn't uh, see a major issue. Um, on the last point, uh, uh, also the action plan uh, decided something. Uh, in particular, the last point relates to the recommendation number 31 of the European Parliament uh, about uh, curricula and uh, the importance of curricula to uh, guarantee mobility within the European school systems and also uh, between uh, member states. Um, as you might know, uh, in uh, in uh, 2020, uh, the Board of Governors uh, has adopted uh, already some uh, uh, key comp new uh, key comp um, sorry, no, has adopted a document uh, uh, regarding the key competencies uh, for lifelong learning uh, uh, to be embedded into the, the, the curricula of, of the schools. And uh, um, in this year, uh, some changes have already been approved for the pupils of uh, the fifth, the sixth, and the, and the seventh year um, to add these uh, key, key competencies to the curricula. Uh, for example, and also uh, some parents were a little bit uh, uh, worried about this, uh, biology too was transformed into a new uh, it's a new uh, item called science, biology, and societies. Uh, um, so, um, also there are uh, in preparation some other changes of the CVs. Uh, uh, one is the introduction to research and academic uh, writing cross uh, curriculum project. Uh, another uh, change uh, uh, will come soon in, in uh, on ICT. Uh, so. There are changes changes going on, but they are well um, in the pipeline. Uh, I think that uh, uh, schools are reacting to the world, the changes uh, in the world, and uh, already the adoption of some uh, uh, modification in the curricula are the proof that uh, uh, these uh, these issues is is uh, is considered and is. Uh, already dealt with. I don't know if there are, you have any uh, other specific uh, uh, 
Yes, and Antonio, I think that uh, looking at the chat, uh, we realize that this conversion uh, is not that simple as one could imagine, because colleagues are uh, mentioning that the problem is not solved. Um, and then I think that is uh, one of the follow-up action that we are going to deal with uh, in order to, pr to provide uh, all the information needed and the answer that is required for something that is really crucial. For uh, for our students, um, so colleagues, uh, be ensured that we will uh, work together with Antonio on this uh, conversion problem, uh, and we will come back. I I, to you I with cannot the, hear the you, uh, Cristiano. Uh, I more or less understood what you said, but uh, uh, I cannot hear you very well. It's interrupted. I don't know if if it's only me or also other the other colleagues. Uh, uh, I was now. Do you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I was just mentioning that the conversion seems to be a concern. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, and we are going to deal together with you uh, with the with the, with the secretary general in order to 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 address the problem and to solve it. Uh, because I mean parents are really afraid about the fact that the conversion uh, is still and uh, seems to be a clear problem. Uh, now I propose that if, yeah. if you if you could, could provide the uh, uh, also concrete uh, examples of, of, of the, the problem, sure. it would help because we could address yeah. together the Secretary General. I mean, and, Gerard is all, already mentioning that there is a conversion problem in entering to the Irish University, for example, and I suppose that is not the only one. So we will uh, summarize all this concern, coming back to you and try to push for having a clear analysis and follow up. Uh, I propose now that we go further with the other uh, question to Alexander and uh, Marco. Yes, I'd, I would finish simply with a comment. I mean, that there is Ines who is writing that for for Germany, it seems that top marks of European school pupils shrunk by 79% since the introduction of the new conversion system. I'll pass now the floor. Uh, to Alexander for the next question. Yes, um, thanks, uh, Marco. I, as far as I know, that um, the issue is still open. It is pending in, in with Germany. So I understand that uh, maybe it would be useful to gather the most up updated uh, information we have from parents. And uh, and uh, but uh, what I can say that uh, I did I, I didn't hear about the Irish uh, issue um, before, but uh, concerning the um, the problem in with Germany, the Secretary General is well aware, and uh, and uh, they are doing their best uh, to 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 keep the pressure and uh, try to solve the issue. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the next uh, question will concern the accredited schools uh, that are important part of the system as they provide uh, opportunities sometimes to remain in the European school systems uh, in places where type 1 schools are not available. Uh, is there a reflection how these accredited schools function in the whole system? Uh, what are the defined weaknesses and ways to remediate? For example, linked to very limited uh, linguistic options available at, at these schools and structural limitations set by the minimum thresholds needed to set classes or options. Uh, not allowing, for example, for the creation of classes or, or false uh, groups. Uh, how are accredited schools performing in, in relation to, to back to the whole uh, type 1 uh, system schools uh, as accredited schools are far away from the second headquarters and report very limited contact uh, is there a platform for them and the teachers and the parents from the accredited schools to com communicate their concerns and uh, could the board of governors introduce a framework in the framework agreement a common standard for the cost reporting in the accredited schools which is necessary for the parents and their employers to have a clear picture of the costs in this type of schools. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Marco, for this question. Uh, is um, 
uh, just to give you uh, an idea of uh, how important is the uh, issue of the accredited school uh, for the future of European schools, uh, we decided to have the Teachers Forum uh, in Parma in the Scuola per l'Europa di Parma, which is uh, an accredited school. Um, also to uh, stress the, the fact that uh, um, in the system now, the accredited schools are more uh, than uh, the, let's say, traditional schools. Uh, there are many new schools in the pipeline. Uh, new school in, uh, will open in Madrid uh, in September, and there are many, uh, many other countries uh, um, thinking about opening, uh, launching uh, accredited schools. Of course. Uh, 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 this uh, success, because it's uh, the consequence of, of the success of, of this uh, of this model, um, brings to, uh, uh, to to a quality uh, control issue. Because of course, uh, as you as you stressed in your question, uh, accredited schools are far from Brussels. They are. Uh, linked to the European system, but are not uh, totally included into the governance of the system. So, um, uh, concerning the, the, the first part of your of your question uh, about the um, uh, the fact that. Uh, Accredited schools are an important part of the system. Uh, during the board of governors in Parma, uh, we have approved uh, uh, an improved frame on quality assurance. I, I will not um, uh, get into the detail of this, but uh, uh, the document is available and uh, you can uh, see um, what uh, the board of governors decided to do to, uh, to, to make it sure that uh, uh, the, the quality level of European accredited schools uh, will be uh, the same uh, of the of the type one schools. Um, and the second question is a reflection uh, how they function uh, weaknesses. Uh, okay, so um, um, let's say that the, the basic uh, um, format of accredited school is uh, uh, with two language sections. Normally, the local, local uh, language plus uh, uh, another section. Uh, normally, the second, uh, the second section is uh, English or French. Um, uh, of course, uh, uh, it depends very much on the, um, on the quantity of pupils enrolled, on the, how big the school is. Mm -hmm. Three section would be, let's say, a possible target to uh, to give uh, 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 the possibility to replicate uh, as much as possible the um, multilinguistic uh, uh, model of European schools. Uh, as far as um, as far as the back is concerned, uh, um, uh, very similar performance uh, uh, is uh, is reported uh, for for the the back. Uh, results in uh, created schools uh, compared to the um, to the type one schools, there is a, a back report uh, available online, so you can uh, also uh, give a look to this, uh, and you will see that uh, there is no considerable difference uh, uh, between the two type of schools. Um, Going to the to the last uh, part of uh, of the question, uh, um, what I can say because this is not a real competence of the board of government, but uh, uh, normally uh, the secretary general um, uh, or one representative of the secretary general attends all the meetings. Uh, of the accredited schools, uh, and also um, a new audit regime regime has been approved recently by the by, by the board of governors in Parma, uh, and uh, uh, it, it makes stronger uh, the um, 
the, the, the level of audit for accredited schools, uh, and there is a direct link to the quality assurance. Um, also, co concerning the action plan, you, you will see uh, action 1.8 and 2.7 are um, specifically dedicated to accredited schools following the recommendation number 21 of the European Parliament. And in particular, if you want, I, I will go through the decisions taken by the Board of Governors in Parma, um, the specific working groups uh, for accredited schools uh, uh, will present proposals uh, um, in, the, in the area of quality assurance uh, um, to uh, the aspect of quality assurance in the accredited schools is currently being analyzed by the accredited schools working group and uh, um, a concrete proposal, as I said, uh, are expected uh, by the end of 2024. Um, also, the, the Secretary Gen the Office of Secretary General uh, is investigating the possibility to improve uh, the stability of small language sections. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, we could go further the actual system with the two or three linguistic sections. Um, and concerning the fees, uh, uh, the, um, the Board of Governors uh, uh, man will mandate the school fees working group uh, to review the school fees for category two and category three pupils uh, and to provide an analysis and concrete proposals by April 2025 at latest. So this is to go a little bit into the detail of the decisions already taken. Many thanks, Antonio. I, I can confirm again and again that all questions and issues rate are going to be addressed even after the meeting. If we, we cannot manage to do it during the meeting, uh, because I see that in the in the chat, uh, colleagues are afraid that their questions are not going to be dealt with. Uh, we are also more than ready to deal with some very specific concern that are mentioned in the chat. Uh, I see here, for example, that uh, is a mention about physical punishment uh, in, in a section. Um, no problem to deal with the, any burning uh, issue. They are questioning how the uh, sexual harassment is dealt in. are also looking at that and dealing with that. Uh, so I really want to confirm again and again that today is just the beginning of a process. Uh, we are going to leave our form. Uh, I've already uh, announced that as far as possible, we'll organize a new meeting with Antonio before the end of the mandate in order to sum. Uh, real, be assured uh, we have uh, during uh, many discussion with the colleagues, uh, that is the frustration of the parents. Uh, they consider that they are not listened, they are not taken into account, that the system is in a way going, uh, running without taking their uh, opinion into account, especially whenever there is a concern, especially whenever there is a student with a specific concern. Um, so this approach uh, that we have been calling in the past as a sort of wrong elitism, uh, if you are not uh, fitting for the purpose, you better go out. Uh, if your, uh, your, <clears throat> your son or daughter has a concern, you better change the school. Uh, we have not enough time to deal with that. It is the standard answer that apparently uh, our colleagues and parents are getting. Uh, it's something that must change, and we hope that uh, with the declaration and the change in the future, things could change. And we also understand that you are not here in order to deal with a specific concern in a specific section, but still for the colleagues, uh, we are not just uh, making policy, we are also assisting you for specific concerns with the help of Antonio with any other authorities and we, are, we we will do it and we will do it of course and seriously. I propose to go back to Marco and Alexander for the other question. Uh, uh, Cristiano, I beg your pardon yeah. because I forgot uh, to answer the very last part uh, uh, of uh, of this question concerning the, um, the framework agreement uh, uh, on a common standard for cost reporting uh, in a credit school. If you want, I can 
completed yeah. it. Okay. Yeah, completely. So, uh, unfortunately, um, we mentioned uh, uh, in the introduction that uh, um, among the, let's say, requests of the European Parliament, there is also the possible revision of, of the of the convention. But uh, uh, so this is a possibility uh, if the member states will agree to uh, to let's say uh, modernize and revise the convention but uh, in the um, in the current uh, framework uh, uh, or the current convention uh, uh, the financial management of uh, accredited schools uh, is a, a national issue so um, it's uh, it's a totally a national financial competence uh, so um, it could be also dealt with uh, uh, at the european level uh, if some some rules of the convention are, are changed. This is to complete the. Yeah, but no, it was a, is, is crucial because I mean, uh, colleagues are also afraid that these uh, uh, accredited schools could in uh, in the future undermine the quality of a uh, type one school and uh, that everything will just become accredited schools without having the same uh, importance that we have now, especially in Brussels. Uh, Marco and Alexander. Yeah, he has this last of uh, part of Kedra's question was linked also on the difficulty on uh, on uh, raised by the parents in the cost reporting that are reimbursed by the employer. So it's it's really not only the cost as itself but the details huh? and and the idea to have a standard reporting tools for all school will would give more transparency and more would uh, 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 permit the parent to get the cost reimbursement more easily this was the idea i'll pass the floor to alexander for the next question yeah next uh, question uh, concerns more the, the wide subject of uh, different pedagogical issues. So many parents observe too much uh, rigidity in terms of, for example, digital curriculum with European school systems, not allowing for quick changes and adaptations to this area, which is constantly evolving. Is there a plan how to make the IT teaching more adaptive? Uh, is Board of Governors discussing also the inequality of the options in S6, S7, giving far less room to choose the options for science, technology, engineering, mathematics stream than for those uh, pupils in the uh, parallel humanistic economics streams that have much more options, possibility to choose much more options? Uh, what are the policies, discussions concerning development uh, to tackle issues like uh, misbehavior, bullying, or even reported by the parents, uh, criminal ones like thefts and the drugs that happen in the schools, and what are the plans to tackle them in a more systemic way, also with the uh, possible support to the personnel which is concerned and involved in this. Are there plans for the European schools to be in the forefront rather than following member states uh, policies in the pedagogy of such issues, for example, like uh, uh, ban limitation on the smartphone use in the schools. Is there a Board of Governors task force monitoring impact of these issues on the pedagogy? Uh, does Board of Governors plans to address rising concerns regarding too big class sizes? And this is also the issue that uh, keep appearing in the chat, as I see. So, Parents are signaling that too big class sizes are affecting the, the outcome of the pedagogy and the outcome of the teaching. And also, what is the reflection concerning swalls and possible support for special education needs children, not only the ones with the special education needs in a, a adaptation uh, significance, but the ones that are uh, overly gifted and need a special uh, support to, to keep this and develop this. Uh, what are plans and discussions how the European school approach may evolve in the future? Thank you. 
Uh, thank you, Alexander, for this bunch of questions. Uh, uh, I will try to go through them. Um, so, uh, concerning the changes and adaptations, so we already mentioned uh, in the previous uh, uh, question re relating uh, uh, the CVs. Uh, in general, um, as far as uh, uh, ICT uh, is concerned, uh, the syllabus uh, are revised regularly. Um, now, as I mentioned already, um, talking about the, the, the CVs, uh, a new item on the um, on ICT will, will be introduced. Uh, so um, we can say that uh, uh, the schools are moving on this. Uh, are not uh, are not uh, uh, passive, and um, much of the flexibility uh, also is mandated to to the teachers. Teachers are have a lot of uh, autonom autonomy to introduce uh, innovation in this uh, in this field. So, in general, um, as far as I understand. Uh, this is not uh, uh, a problematic issue. Uh, maybe uh, there could be some differences, differences ca case by case, uh, but uh, in general, um, the the situation uh, looks uh, quite uh, quite positive on this. But uh, having said that, of course, uh, I'm in the same position of, uh, as you. If you, as a parent, uh, you have uh, uh, some uh, concrete uh, example of. Uh, uh, of something not going in this way, please uh, uh, raise it and uh, we will try to, to find out uh, uh, at what point we are. Um, concerning the paragraph two of your question, uh, and in the quality of the options, uh, I gave a look to the figures and uh, I must say that the, the, the most chosen subject for the, for the BAC is chemistry. Uh, so, um, in terms of uh, number of options available, are you sure that uh, uh, the scientific uh, options are discriminated? Because uh, I uh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, but also on this, if if you have any concrete uh, example, please uh, let me know, and we will try to to know more um, about this. Um, concerning the um, Third part of, 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 of this question. Uh, uh, misbehavior. Blah, blah. Okay. Uh, on this, uh, um, the Board of Governors has approved uh, uh, a, a framework policy on pupils, including uh, more or less all the aspects uh, you have raised in, in the in the question. So misbehavior, bullying, uh, uh, all the other cases. Now uh, it it's, it is up. Uh, uh, to the autonomy of the of the directors and of the schools to uh, revise uh, the, the the policy documents relating uh, to each aspects uh, on anti bullying for example on mental health uh, on abuse etc cetera, etc cetera. and uh, this is uh, in progress so um, it's up to the to the school to implement uh, all these new policies but uh, uh, let's say the the, the, the general framework uh, has has already been set by by the board of governors. Um, on the following point, uh, uh, by limitations smart phone. Okay, so um, I on this point on these specific issues of smartphones use uh, um, the. Um, the Board of Governors mandated an Italian specialist, Mr. Uh, Alberto Pelai, recently to meet uh, all the directors of the schools uh, um, on this specific issue, training uh, awareness on the use of smartphones. Um, of course, uh, also on this point, as uh, uh, for the previous point, uh, uh, this is uh, pretty much uh, under the, the autonomy of, of, the, of, the, of each school. Um, the issue has been discussed uh, uh, between uh, directors, parents, uh, pupils, uh, and um, there is also 
uh, an ongoing evaluation of the possibility to ban uh, smartphones uh, uh, under the age of, uh, of 15. Uh, but it's not being decided. But uh, the, the issue is uh, discuss, discussed at all levels in the European schools. Um, concerning the size of the classes, uh, I would say that uh, uh, um, there are two levels. One uh, uh, is a educational pedagogical level. Of course, uh, uh, big classes are more difficult to, to deal with. Uh, uh, to guarantee quality in big classes is uh, more difficult than uh, uh, than uh, it is in small classes. But at the same time, we have the the financial issue. Uh, so um, let's say the size of the classes uh, will not be touched. Uh, but uh, if you also uh, on this point give a, give a look to the figures. Uh, uh, only a few classes uh, reaches the maximum of, of 30 pupils. Uh, the average is 14, 15. Uh, the most difficult uh, section uh, uh, on this point uh, is a uh, is, uh, French section because they are, and also it's part of the uh, big issues of, of, of the crowding uh, in, uh, in Brussels. Um, and uh, about the the last uh, um, question on uh, swords and uh, possible support uh, concerning the results, uh, it seems that swords uh, students are very uh, well with back results and PISA results, even higher than sometimes the non swords uh, students. Uh, and the same uh, we can say the same on support and on needs. So, uh, once again, if you have any specific uh, um, problem to highlight on, on this, please uh, uh, let me know because uh, the perception I have uh, with the information I, uh, uh, I could access uh, is that uh, this is not a very, very uh, problematic issue. I don't know if I managed to, to answer the questions. Yeah, no, thank you very much, Antonio. Uh, what is important is to have this answer in perspective. Uh, we will uh, keep in touch with you, providing you for the example, uh, statistics, and uh, all elements that will uh, allow you to, to put forward our request. Uh, it's important to, to have this kind of approach, because if you look at the question in the chat, uh, there is a clear lack of dialogue. Uh, Colleagues uh, seems not to be understood, not even listen, uh, and is uh, I mean it's exactly the contrary of the message that European schools must address: inclusion, respect, and uh, unity in diversity is is important. When when you mention the autonomy of the director, uh, sometimes colleagues are really um, convinced that too much depends on the director. He cannot be a director who could implement a very good policy and then they change the director and they, the next one is uh, not doing exactly the same or is uh, changing. I mean, director must even uh, be there in order to follow up of a political instruction and uh, uh, framework to be established. Um, and it is important that our colleagues uh, can get this guarantee. Some of our colleagues are, for example, choosing a school or trying to get the school on which the director is open to some uh, concerns uh, because they know that the other director are not not enough. Uh, it's exactly what we have experienced when in the past we were dealing with this inclusion of colleagues with disabilities. Uh, we had a very good example in Laken with a director who was uh, trying to do the utmost effort. Some others were just saying it's not my duty to change the policy. I mean, it's important to have this kind of dialogue. Uh, and then we come to the last bunch of questions, staff. I think that you are fully aware about the concern of the non-permanent teachers. Uh, we have been really uh, getting lots and lots of questions in this respect. Um, but I mean, I leave the floor to Marco and Alexander for uh, raising this issue. Thank you. Thank you, Cristiano. So concerning the staff, uh, European schools are based on the quality teacher and they are expected to provide good career opportunity. In the same time, locally recruited teachers are in a very precarious conditions and there are reported issues with replacement of absent teachers. 
how the Board of Governors wants to address the demand of locally recruited teachers to organize themselves as staff representation and have their trade union rights recognized. What is the Board of Governors reflection concerning the necessity to offer to the teacher and important support staff, as an example, like psychologist, both stability and development possibility. So stability in terms of contract duration and salary. Is there a discussion on making the recruitment system more flexible in order to provide possibility of short term or medium term replacement or absent sick teacher or very important support for the special education needs student? Um, I finished. Antonio, if you can reply. Yes, uh, thanks, Marco. As you can understand, uh, this, uh, this is the last uh, bunch of questions, but not the least, uh, in the sense that uh, uh, perhaps uh, the, um, the situation of the locally recruited teachers uh, uh, is uh, one of the most urgent and sensitive issues. Uh, as, I, as I said, uh, um, in the introduction of my of my intervention, uh, uh, this is also uh, one of the reasons why the Italian presidency has decided to uh, set uh, uh, as a priority a general discussion on on, on teachers. Uh, we don't have schools without teachers. Uh, we don't have good uh, teaching without good teachers, and uh, uh, most of all, we cannot. Uh, uh, have a system living uh, with two different worlds, uh, let's say local recruiters and teachers and uh, and seconded teachers, uh, uh, living in into completely different uh, with completely different perspective, etc. Uh, so um, my first answer is general. Uh, I can say that uh, uh, we really care, at least the Italian presidency put uh, a lot of uh, attention and energy on this issue. And uh, I invite you also to uh, give a look to the, um, let's say, results uh, to the outcome of, of the teachers forum, because uh, the issue of uh, the, the careers, recruitment, mobility, uh, what do we do with teachers when they finish their mandate uh, uh, in the European schools and, and go back to, to national schools? Uh, how do we prepare uh, teachers who uh, are now in the national system and uh, will, will have to move to the European system? So we would like to create a circular, let's say, economy of teachers and also a, a system without uh, of course, any discriminations, etc. It, it is not easy, uh, but uh, at least I can tell you that uh, now uh, the issue is, is well on the table of the political uh, decision makers, and uh, we really um, hope uh, to to uh, have any progress, uh, concrete progress in the in the coming years. Uh, just to give an example. Um, Referring to the Italian uh, to the Italian situation. Now I'm not talking about only locally recruited. I'm talk, um, talking about the in general the careers of teachers. In, in Parma, the, the Minister for Affairs announced that Italy will uh, harmonize the legis legislation for second teachers to uh, to bring uh, the, sec the, the, the the secondment up to nine years. Uh, why, uh, as it is in the all uh, most of all. Uh, uh, the, the, the member states. And uh, so we are really uh, taking care of the issue. Concerning the local recruited teachers, um, I, I totally agree with the, um, uh, what you say, what you write, that they are in a very precarious conditions. Uh, um, and uh, um, the, um, the action plan, uh, uh, took care of this uh, of this issue. Uh, point three point point three point uh, point three point three and point three point seven 
uh, deal with uh, uh, this uh, issue of the locally recruited teachers. Uh, I will go into the detail uh, immediately. Concerning the staff representations, uh, locally recruited teachers, they have uh, uh, staff representation uh, with rights and also protected, but uh, as, as you know, uh, they, they have a, a different status according to the convention. Uh, they cannot be part of the board of governors, for example. They cannot have a, a, a delegate to the to the board of governors with the current convention. So, in the in the current legal framework, uh, um, there is a difference between. Uh, but uh, uh, they can have a staff a staff representation. Concerning the the board of governors, uh, uh, I, I go through the um, decision taken in Parma on this. Uh, uh, which is the first point, point three, point, e, point, point three. Uh, the Board of Governors mandated the joint uh, uh, second and teachers and locally recruited teachers working group to provide uh, um, uh, proposals to further extend uh, the concept of protecting teacher teachers uh, teaching functions by April 2025 at latest. So this is the first concrete uh, decision taken, and also uh, on point uh, um, 3.7, just give me one second. Uh, the Board of Governors also mandated uh, the joint second and teachers and, and the locally recruited teachers working group uh, to provide a concrete proposal by April 2025 concerning the following issues. Discrepancy of salaries between the nursery primary cycle and the secondary cycle. Recognition of re relevant job experience of uh, locally recruited teachers and further improvement of job security of locally recruited teachers. This means that uh, uh, now uh, the Board of Governors has received the mandate and they will have to, in particular, this uh, working group uh, will have to prepare a, um, a proposal um, by the by April 2025, so under uh, the presidency of Cyprus, uh, to address all these issues. I know it, it is just a start, but uh, it, it's already important that uh, the, the Board of Governors uh, accept, I mean, recognized uh, the need to act on this. Uh, um, uh, going ahead uh, uh, to the following questions. Uh, okay, okay, well, I mean, uh, uh, I also invite you to, um, to analyze uh, the outcome of the, of the workshops uh, uh, of the Teachers Forum because uh, also in terms of contract, uh, contract duration, salary, uh, development possibilities so that, that um, we have discussed it uh, during two days with the experts and, and, and teachers, most of all, uh, in Parma. So uh, uh, I, I would suggest to start from, from that. And uh, the last part of the questions. Uh, okay, for the moment, so if there is a short term, uh, um, so to, to make the system more flexible for required recruitment. Uh, okay, so at present, you're right. Uh, this uh, uh, system is available uh, uh, for type one schools, apparently, where uh, a new teacher can be hired uh, after one week of absence, um, but uh, it, uh, it does not exist for, for for greater schools. So it is also uh, an option to extend this, uh, this approach uh, to all schools. I don't know if uh, I managed to touch. Yeah, yeah having, uh, having um, um, Antonio, what would be really important is to share the document uh, and then colleagues could have a look and then uh, we can um, meet you again for uh, any follow-up question. Um, what I'm really afraid of is to see in the chat uh, several questions about the physical punishment by school staff 
an inappropriate response from the school management. Uh, I think that we all agree that there is no room whatsoever for physical punishment in any school, especially and even further in the European school. I've been aware about these complaints. Uh, do you have any information about the Board of Governance uh, have been including that in the framework that you were referring to? No, I'm uh, quite surprised and also worried about uh, this, what you say. Uh, to my knowledge, I mean, uh, I haven't received uh, information uh, on this. Uh, so, if you have concrete examples, uh, please let us know. Uh, of course, uh, uh, this is part of the let's say school's uh, autonomy to deal with this, but uh, uh, it must be clear that uh, in, in no way there could be room for this, uh, this kind of uh, uh, events in the schools. So, they are totally out of, uh, uh, out of the, the rules. So, if it happens, uh, please report it to the Yarashi, let's say, to, first of all, to, uh, to the directors and to the pedagogical advisors and uh, and uh, but I mean it is not a, mat a matter of uh, of the competence of the board of government because the rules are already there of course so uh, it's not a matter of changing the rules it could be a matter of uh, uh, implementation of rules. Uh, yeah, I mean it is it's clear uh, that there is something going wrong in the communication between parents and schools. It's also clear that we are not this, this saying that everything is wrong, uh, but even if it is one single case that is not properly dealt with, it's one too much. Uh, so we will uh, we will uh, focus also uh, on the question of sexual harassment that has been mentioned uh, several times in the chat. Um, it is clear that we cannot discuss now. Uh, all the details, but with our lawyers, we are more than ready to ensure any proper follow up to get in touch with those who are supposed to act. And should they refuse to act, even to escalate when is proper and is, uh, I mean, eventually needed to go. Um, uh, I think, Antonio, that uh, we are really grateful, uh, especially be because we know that you are now um, dealing with uh, some family problems. I'm really grateful that you have decided, ne nevertheless, to come and to stay with us. Um, I don't want to keep you further. Uh, what we, I would like to do with you is, uh, once you get the, the official version of the documents, we will share it with our colleagues. Uh, we will uh, uh, follow up any question raised the form will be open uh, for colleagues so you are really invited to to raise other questions that you are now for example reflecting upon after having listened um, antonio all the questions will be uh, sent to, uh, to antonio in order to make him aware but it's clear that antonio cannot deal with all the question uh, we will deal with the question at appropriate level in uh, close collaboration with him uh, through the secretary general director of schools uh, we will deal with political question general question and specific question because everything is important we know that for a parent uh, to have a concern with one uh, child, it's already uh, something. You also are invited to have a look at our YouTube channel on which we have so many conferences that we are organized with Bruno Umbeck on concerns on uh, pedagogy issues, uh, smartphone, uh, bullying, uh, harassment, uh, because for us it's important to, to deal also with these concerns. I leave you the floor, Antonio, for uh, this first conclusion, and uh, uh, I hope that I didn't go too far uh, uh, announcing that we will have a new meeting with you before the end of the mandate. Thanks, Cristiano. No, uh, not at all. Uh, as I already said, uh, um, I, I would be glad to have a second uh, meeting with you, maybe after you had the time to uh, sure. uh, analyze the action plan. Um, and uh, also maybe to match it with with all the questions raised, so that we can go through it. And also, I as a piece of information, I, I want to tell you that uh, the handover meeting with the incoming presidency from Cyprus uh, has already been uh, set on the twenty first of June. 
So formally, the Italian presidency will uh, will be there until the end of July, but uh, the Endover meeting with the incoming presidency will be on the 21st of June. Uh, why I'm in, Cy in, uh, in Cyprus? Uh, why I'm saying that? Because uh, in, as we did for the Teachers Forum, uh, which is already uh, confirmed by the coming presidency, uh, so they will have a second teacher forum during the, uh, the next presidency. I would like also to um, uh, bring to the new presidency, coming presidency, some uh, good news. Uh, one of these could be to have a chat, uh, direct chat with the with the trade unions, uh, with you and with all any any other. Uh, syndicate uh, uh, requesting it uh, just to keep uh, the level of exchange of information uh, uh, at, the, at the highest level. I think it's uh, more useful for the presidency than for for you because uh, you, uh, as an organization, you have a lot of uh, members with uh, kids, uh, parents, etc. For the presidency, sometimes at the very beginning is. Uh, 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 such a big world and have uh, somebody telling you what's going on uh, coming from the concrete life is uh, is uh, very very useful so um, thank you for inviting me and uh, my suggestion is that uh, we can uh, end over to the new presidency also some of your um, of your questions of your unsolved issues so that they, they are aware that uh, there are some uh, uh, some issues particularly sensitive uh, and uh, who, which deserve um, a strong attention from from the presidency. Uh, the presidency is just the moderator of all the of all the delegates, so we have not uh, that power. But we can set the agenda of meetings, so uh, we can uh, suggest to to add uh, some specific issue to to the discussion. So. Um, you can use uh, the presidency for this purpose. So, if, if we want to have the next meeting, it would be useful to maybe have it before the end of our meeting, or in case we, we don't manage to have it before the 21st of, uh, of, uh, of June, uh, we can also send something to our uh, uh, friends from Cyprus uh, before the end of the, the presidency in written. Oh, I think that we will do our best to manage to have the meeting before, and I'm really glad that you have proposed what I was <laughs> proposing, uh, but I didn't dare to do it be before having discussed with you. I mean, uh, to have this uh, kind of meeting as a, a standard approach for the presidency, I think, will be really helpful, and to have uh, uh, the results of our discussion as a end over and follow up to address to the next presidency, it's really useful. Uh, it's important the colleagues can have the feeling that can be heard. Uh, I, I see the question now: how your are going to be addressed. Uh, I promise with the, with the team of R and D, with Alexander, Marco, and Ikra, that we will that will be addressed to the pro uh, person that is in charge and everything under the umbrella of of of, um, of the chairman that we have the honor to have with with us today. Uh, and Antonio, you have opened a door that was closed so far. Uh, you are the first chairman uh, mm. coming to a meeting of this, and we are really grateful to do it. And we hope that uh, they will be, as I mentioned, a products for the future. So thank you very much again for being with us and uh, keep in touch for all the questions uh, for organizing the next meeting. Uh, thank you very much, colleagues. There have been so many and so many questions that is the proof that we need to open the, the dialogue and our promise is that we are going to do it with with the team who is in charge of that thank you very much to everyone and thank you again Antonio. thank you very much and uh, see you soon then see you Ciao.